Okay, the notes for AP Calculus on the topic of uh, the second fundamental theorem of calculus continuum. So this one's a little different. It says let g be a, the piecewise linear function whose graph is given. So we've got the graph of g right here given to us. And notice it's defined on negative pi right here to pi. And we've got this other function f, x, which is defined as g of x, this one, minus sine of 2x. And then a third function, h, is defined as this definite from 0 to 4x of g of t dt, pi, h prime of pi over 4. So let's make sure we keep track of which one is which here. We've got the graph of g, f, we're given the equation, and then part a, we're given the equation. So for part a, before we can find h prime of pi over 4, we need h prime of x. So h of x would equal, well, if we take the derivative of this side, we have to take the derivative of this definite integral. You know, d over dx, the derivative respect to x is our variable. Uh, the integral from 0 to 4x. Inside that, we've got g of t, t. So here we're going to use our second fundamental theorem of calculus which is really relates to the derivative integral or reverse operation, so they essentially cancel out, except here, not just x here, it's 4x. So that's like our function inside. Notice the constant is the lower limit, so there's no need to flip the lower and upper limits, but that's um, the function inside, so we do need to use the chain rule and multiply by the derivative of 4x, which is 4. And then the derivative integral cancel out, and the only thing that happens is this uh, 4x replaces the t. So it was just x, the x would replace the t, but here it's 4. So it still stays g, the function stays the same, except now it's got 4 outside instead of Because again, the derivative integral is Now we can substitute in pi. So when you do that, the 4s are just out there. So you're just left with g of pi. H prime of pi 4 equals 4 times g of pi. So we've got the graph of g right here. So to find g of pi, well, that just represents the y value right here at pi. Now notice here... <coughs> Um, there's four lines till it gets to pi here, so these go by fourths, so this is pi over 4, pi over 2, uh, 3 pi over 4, and pi. Same thing here, so this is pi over 4, and this is half of pi right here. So you can see the y value right there would be exactly half of pi, pi over 2. So we have pi over 4. Four times g of pi over four, or g of pi right here, the y value there is pi over two, and you can see that reduces to be about h of pi over four. Right, let's take a look at one that's a little bit different on part b. Um, say we're overall problem, except now we're given this definite integral of negative pi to pi of f of x dx. We want about it and show the computations that lead to your answer. So this is f of x right here. And notice it's two functions. g of x minus sine of 2x. So that's what we're going to integrate. So notice g of x we have the graph of here, g. And the second part, sine, we have the equation of. So that's your clue. You want to split it into two separate integrals separated by a minus sign here. Remember, that's one of the properties. Just like derivatives, when you take the derivative separately, you can do the same thing for integrals. Here, because one's the graph and one's the equation, we definitely want to do it. So, first one, integral from negative pi to pi of g of x. x and minus, in between them, if it was a plus, that would say whatever it is. And then the 
go again from negative pi to pi, sine of 2x. So when you integrate g of x, <coughs> well, we have the graph of it. So what you have to remember, this represents the area under the curve between negative pi and pi, or in other words, the area between the curve and the x-axis from negative pi to pi. So we've got three triangles there. So if we split that up, this triangle, this triangle below, and this triangle below. What you have to remember, though, is the units here are each. This goes to pi all the way here. So they're in terms of pi. They're not just normal units here for the triangles. So the first triangle would be 1 half. The base from here to here is pi. And the height is also plus, or actually minus, next one's below uh, the x-axis, so it's negative. Uh, this one here would be 1 half, again, it's a triangle. The base here, notice, is half of pi, pi over 2. And the height, that's just, notice these goes by fourths of pi, so that's negative pi over 4 there. So the height is just pi over 4. We already counted for the negative right here. And then plus our last triangle here, the base is, from here to here is pi over 2, and the height is also. So we've got pi squared over 2 minus pi squared over 4 times 4, 16, plus pi squared over 8. So we can combine those a, uh, a little bit by getting a common denominator, but let's work on the other integral here. This one we can integrate by hand. Now you can use traditional u substitution where you say you go to 2x. Um, that's fine. Uh, but remember the shortcut when you um, use the shortcut, since the derivative du dx would just be a constant of 2, you don't have to use u substitution if you don't want to use the shortcut. And just remember to divide by this derivative, so you got about one half out in front a constant, and then you don't have to convert the lower and upper limits either, so just stay negative pi to pi, and then there will be some um, integral sine is negative cosine, so x stays inside there, so the negative there cancels out this negative to make it positive, oops, and if I accidentally put the integral signs wrong, sorry about that. I forgot we were already integrating, so I should have made this into the brackets there. From negative five. All right, so we've got a positive one half out in front, and plug in uh, pi there. We've got cosine of two pi minus cosine of negative 2 pi. So if we combine these with a common denominator of uh, 16, this would be 8 pi squared over 16 minus pi squared over 16 plus multiply 2 pi squared over 16. But notice what's going to happen here. 2 pi and negative 2 pi are in the exact same place, just going around a different direction. Cosine of both places is 1. So this is 1 minus 1. That's 0. That wipes out this entire term here. So all we're left with is this part. And we've got a common number. We can combine those. 8 pi squared minus 1 pi squared over 16 is 7, plus 2 gives you 9 pi squared over 16. Alright, let's go one more that's a little bit different. On this one, 
um, yeah, another the same piecewise function, except this time it says find all the x values for which f has a critical point. So, remember, um, where f has a critical point is where f prime of x is either 0 or undefined. Alright, so let's take a look at this one. Here we've got um, the derivative we have to take first of f of x, so f prime of x would equal the derivative g of x is the prime of x, and the derivative of sine is the cosine, but we've got the chain rule there, function inside. is uh, the derivative of 2x is 2, so it would be 2, derivative of x is 2 times derivative of sine is cosine. Alright, so here's where it gets a little tricky because g prime, we have um, the equation up here. We don't have the equation up, we have the graph up instead of the equation. So, let's first see uh, if anything makes this undefined. Well, where is g prime undefined? Right here, this is pi over 4. So, x equals pi over 4 is a critical number because it's got a corner right there on the graph. And then <clears throat> the other things it is, since these are just linear, there's two possible cases. Um, negative pi is less than x, which is less than pi over 4. On that segment, of x. Notice the slope here. It goes down pi over pi. So that would be negative pi over pi is just negative 1. However, for the other interval for pi over 4 to pi, then you can see it goes up pi over 4, right pi over 4, so that'd be pi over 4 over pi over 4 is just 1. So there's just positive 1. So if we put those values in here, when we set it equal to 0 to find our critical numbers, the first order is 0. We already found where it's undefined. So it'd be 0 equals 1 possibility for this interval to negative 1, and then we minus 2 for the sine of 2x. And the other possibility over here is 0 equals um, positive 1 minus 2 x. So if we isolate the cosine on both of these, this one you'll end up with. If you add the 2 cosine 2x on the side, cosine 2x equals, you'd have the positive 2 here, so it'd be negative 1 over 2, so the cosine is negative 1 half. And this one, if you add the 2x over and divide by 2, you'll have the cosine of 2x equals positive 1 half. And where we look, remember, um, since there's 2x in there instead of just x, you'd have to multiply these by 2. So you look between negative 2 pi is less than 2x, which is less than pi over 2. Multiply that by 2. Multiply this one by 2, you get, you get pi over 2 is less than 2x, which is less than 2. So that's where we'll be looking for each one. So let's right here. For each of these. So let's work where cosine is negative at first between negative pi and pi over 4. Well, cosine is only negative in between here and this quadrant, in the third quadrant, so it would be negative 1 half right here, negative 1 and 2. 
And as we're going in the negative direction, this is zero, this is the negative direction here. So <laughs> this angle here is pi over three. So this is negative three pi over three. So the angle we're looking for, this would be two pi over three. So two x could equal negative two pi over three. But when you divide by two, we get x equal. The twos cancel out negative pi over three. So that's our critical number from this equation. You get more than one here, it's just one. And then over here, we look between pi over four and pi. And here's pi. 45 degrees, here's pi over 4, and we're looking for cosine being positive 1 half. So cosine is only positive in these two quadrants, so it'd be in the first quadrant right here, where this side is 1, and this is 2, and notice this is positive pi over 3. So 2x would equal pi over 3, but again, divide by 2, we get x equals pi over 6. So those are three answers there, and you could write them together. Uh, doesn't matter what order you put in. Pi over four, we got a defined one. Negative pi over three, and pi over six. And little braces here. So you have multiple answers. Or if you just leave them separate. There. And that concludes the notes uh, for AP Calculus on the topic of the second fundamental theorem of calculus continuum.